Hey guys, so we're going to start our second chapter book read aloud and um, we're going to do Wish, Wish Tree from Catherine Applegate. So we've done Ivan, Crenshaw, and now her third one, Wish Tree. Um, I've never read it. I've been wanting to read it. I've said that before. So I'm looking forward to reading this with you. It's the same format in the way that the fonts a decent size. The pages aren't completely filled up. Some of our chapters are shorter. There's pictures in it. Um, I like stories like this. I just like how it looks. It feels good. Uh, I changed the scenery. We're in Hunter's playroom. Um, so this is where I'll do it for a while. I might go back to his room. Um, I'm hoping you can hear me. I know some friends have said it's hard, so I'm trying to speak up and, you know, you can hear me without being so loud I wake the baby. That's key there. So if you want to see something really cool before we start. This, can you see it behind me, is a lamp. That was my grandpa's who passed away last year. And he was a fire chief in Hartford. And this is a real firebox that came out of a government building. And when I was little, I used to play with it in his home. And so I got it when he passed away. But look at it. You pull it down and where you would push for the emergency. Oh, it turns the light on. That's weird and bright. That's what I used to do over and over again until I got yelled at. Now I can do it as an adult and no one can yell at me. All right, let's start this story. Wish tree, Rory's here. Hopefully she lays down and relaxes. For newcomers and for welcomers. Oh, I like that. Be different to trees, so it's a little poem to start. The talking oak to the ancient spoke, by, but any tree will talk to me. What truths I know, I garden so, but those who want to talk and tell, and those who will not listen be, will never hear a syllable from out of the lips of any tree. Huh. The idea that the talking oak will speak, but those that are going to talk and not listen will never hear the true things. Oh, that's deep. This is going to be one of those stories. Do you want me to read? Here, let me read the summary of it. Red is an oak tree who is many rings old. Red is the neighborhood wish tree. People write their wishes on pieces of cloth and tie them to red's branches, along with a crow named Bongo and other animals who seek refuge in red's hollows. This wish tree watches over the neighborhood. You might say red has seen it all, until a new family moves in. Not everyone is welcoming, and red's experience as a wish tree is more important than ever. Oh, so it's kind of like Ivan where things are going to have um, personification. Realistic human qualities, though they're not real. Or real as in speaking, thinking, that kind of real. Interesting. It's hard to talk to trees. We're not big on chit-chat. That's not to say we can't do amazing things. Things you probably can't do. Cradle downy owlets, steady flimsy tree forts, photosynthesis. But talk to people... Not so much. And just try to get a tree to tell a good joke. Trees do talk to some folks. The ones we know, we can trust. We talk to daredevil squirrels. We talk to hardworking worms. We talk to flashy butterflies and bashful moths. Birds, they're delightful. Frogs, grumpy, but good-hearted. Snakes, terrible gossipers. Trees, never met a tree I didn't like. Well, okay. There's that sycamore down on the corner. Yickety, yickety, yak, 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 that one. So do we ever talk to people? Actually talk? That most people of people skills? Good question. Trees have a rather complicated relationship with people, after all. One minute you're hugging us, the next minute you're turning us into tables and tongue depressors. Perhaps you're wondering why the fact that trees talk wasn't covered in science class during those Mother Nature is Our Friends lesson. Don't blame your teachers. They probably don't know that trees can talk. Most people don't. Nonetheless, if you find yourself standing near a particularly friendly looking tree on a particularly lucky feeling day, it can't hurt to listen up. Trees can't tell jokes, but we can certainly tell stories. And if all you hear is the whisper of leaves, don't worry. Most trees are introverts at heart. Introverts means you're kind of inside yourself. You don't really want to socialize or be around people. Not to say you don't like it, but you're okay just being with you. I like this already. Name's Red, by the way. Maybe we've met. 
oak tree near the elementary school. Big, but not too. Sweet shade in the summer and fine color in the fall. I am proud to say that I'm a northern red oak, also known as Quercus ruba. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Red oaks are one of the most famous trees and well-known in North America. In my neighborhood alone, hundreds upon hundreds of us are weaving our roots into the soil like knitters on a mission. I have rigid, reddish-gray bark, leathery leaves with pointed lobes, stubborn, searching roots, and if I do say so myself, the best fall color on the street, red. Red doesn't begin to do me justice, though. Come October, I look like I'm a blaze. It's a miracle the fire department doesn't try to hose me down every autumn. You might be surprised to learn that all red oaks are named red. Likewise, all sugar maples are called sugar, and all junipers are called juniper, and all boojum trees are called boojum. That's how it is in the tree world. We don't need names to tell one another apart. Imagine a classroom where every child is named Melvin. Imagine the poor teacher trying to take attendance each morning. It's a good thing trees don't go to school. Of course, there are exceptions to the name rule. Somewhere in Los Angeles, there's a palm tree who insists on being called karma, but you know how Californians can be. I like it because it has the leaves and the tree. My friends call me red and you can too, but for a long time people in the neighborhood have called me the wish tree. There's a reason for this and it goes way back to when I wasn't much more than a tiny seed with high aspirations. Long story. Every year on the first day of May, People come from all over town to adore me with scraps of paper, tags, bits of fabric, snippets of yarn, and the occasional gym sock. Each offering represents a dream, a desire, or a longing. Whether draped, tossed, or tied with a bow, they're all hopes for something better. Wish trees have a long and honorable history going back centuries. There are many in Ireland, where there are usually hawthorns or the occasional ash tree, but you can find wish trees all over the world. For the most part, people are kind when they visit me. They seem to understand that a, night knot, a tight knot might keep me from growing the way I need to grow. They are gentle with my leaves, careful with my exposed roots. After people write their hopes on a rag or piece of paper, they tie it onto my branches. Usually they whisper the wish aloud. It's traditional to wish on the 1st of May, but people stop by throughout the year. My, oh my, the things I have heard. I wish for a flying skateboard. I wish for a world without war. I wish for a week without clouds. I wish for the world's biggest candy bar. I wish for an A on my geography test. I wish that Mrs. Jen Torney weren't so grumpy in the morning. I wish my gerbil could talk. I wish my dad could get better. I wish I weren't hungry sometimes. I wish I weren't so lonely. I wish I knew what to wish for. So many wishes, grand and goofy, selfish and sweet. It's an honor, all the hopes bestowed upon my tired old limbs. Although by the end of May, I look like someone dumped a huge basket of trash on top of me. As you've probably noticed, I'm more talkative than most trees. This is new for me. I'm still getting used to it. Nonetheless, I've always known how to keep a secret. You have to be discreet when you're a wish tree. People tell trees all kinds of things. They know we'll listen. It's not like we have a choice. Besides, the more you listen, the more you learn. Bongo says I'm a busybody, and I suppose she has a point. She's my best pal, a crow. I've known since she was nothing but a pecking beak and a speckled egg. We disagree sometimes, but that is the way all friends are, no matter what species. I've seen many surprising friendships during my life. A pony and a toad a red-tailed hawk and a white-footed mouse, a lilac bush and a monarch butterfly, all of them have disagreements from time to time. I think Bongo is too pessimistic for such a young bird. Bongo thinks I'm too optimistic for such an old tree. Pessimistic, you look on the negative side. Optimistic, you look on the positive side. It's true, I am an optimistic. I prefer to take the long view of life. Old as I am, I've seen both good and bad, but I've seen far more good than bad. So Bongo and I agree to disagree, and that's fine. We're very different after all. Bongo, for example, thinks the way we, we trees name ourselves is ridiculous. As it is the custom with crows, Bongo chose her name after her first flight. It may not be her only name, however. Crows change names on a whim. Bongo's cousin, Gizmo, had had 17 names. Sometimes crows adopt human names. I'd seen more Joe Crows than I've seen Sunny Days. Sometimes they name themselves after things that catch their fancy. Pop-Tart, 
Jujubi, dead rat. They'll name themselves after aerobatic maneuvers, death spiral or barrel roll, or after colors, auburn or beetle black. Many crows opt for sounds they found on, of making. Crows are excellent mimickers. I've met crows named Wind Chime, 18 Wheeler, and Grouchy Cab Driver, not to mention a few others that are not appropriate for polite conversation. Down the street lives an aspiring rock band composed of four middle schoolers. They practice in the garage. Their instruments include an accordion, a bass guitar, a tuba, and bongo drums. The band has yet to perform outside of the garage, but bongo loves to sit on the roof and sway to their music. I am loving this story so far. I'm going to do two more chapters because they're quite small. Names aren't the only way we differ from crows. Some trees are male, some trees are female, and some, like me, are both. It's confusing, as is so often the case with nature. Call me she, call me he, anything will work. Over the years, I've heard that Bostonians, or Boutonist, those lucky souls who study the lives of plants all a day, botanists, I'm saying it wrong, there we go, botanist, call some trees, such as hollies and willows, uh, let's see if I can say this, Dioceus? Hmm which means they have separate male and female tree parts. Huh. Lots of other trees, like me, are called monocysts. That's just a fancy way of saying that they're either male or female. It is also evident that trees have far more interesting lives than you sometimes give us credit for. I didn't realize that. Like, I know trees, they go through photosynthesis, they have seeds, they drop the seeds, and they sprout up again. Um, but I didn't realize that they made them like genders. Hmm. One thing trees and crows have in common, in fact, one thing all the nature world has in common, is that the rule that we're not supposed to talk to people. It is for our own protection, at least that's the theory. I've often wondered if the endless silence is a good idea. There have been so many times I've wanted to speak up, to intervene, to help people. I've never said a word, though. That's just the way the world has always worked. Have there been slip-ups? Sure, mistakes have been made. Last year, I heard about a frog named Fly who'd been napping in a mailbox. All frogs are named after bugs they enjoy eating. When the mailman opened the box, Fly leapt out with a frantic croak. The mailman fainted. He woke up to Fly, who was apologizing profusely, squatting on his forehead. Clearly a breach of the don't talk to people rule. But as always seems to happen, the incident was soon forgotten. After all, the mailman was absolutely certain that frogs can't talk. Just hearing things, he no doubt said to himself. Interesting enough, he retired not long after the frog incident. In any case, when you consider the number of trees and frogs and otters and wrens and dragonflies and armadillos and everybody else in the nature world, you'd think people would have caught on to our little secret by now. What can I say? Nature is tricky, and people are, well, sorry, but most of you aren't that observant. Perhaps you're wondering if you're a curious or doubtful sort, just exactly how trees communicate. You may find yourself inspecting a nearby ponderosa pine, perhaps, or an aspen or sweet gum, puzzling out our magic. People speak with the help of lungs, throats, voice boxes, tongues, and lips, and thanks to an intricate symphony of sound and breath and movement. But there are plenty of other ways to convey information. An eyebrow cocked, a giggle stiffened, a tear brushed aside. These two are ways you express yourself. For a tree, communication is just as complicated and miraculous as it is for humans. In a mysterious dance of sunlight and sugar, water and wind and soil, we build invisible bridges to connect with the world. Frogs have their own way of connecting. Same for dogs, same for newts and spiders, elephants and eagles. How exactly do we do it? Well, that's for us to know and you to figure out. Nature also adores a good secret. I love the way she writes. I like when she takes inanimate things or things that are living but not human alive and makes them living. I like this so far. Um, learning a lot about trees, learning new vocabulary words that I'm probably saying wrong. Um, but we're going to stop there. That's six chapters and then we'll pick up more tomorrow and we'll really get into it. Um, I hope you're enjoying it so far. Have a good day.